Today I'm gonna to show you how to build some way over-engineered brackets, so come on. Hey everybody, welcome back to Speedy's Garage. Today, we're gonna to be working on kind of a sub-project of a project. It's winter time, as I've said before, I get kind of bored and a little stir-crazy in the winter. And so I'll start looking for little projects to do. Uh, Go Mango, the Hellcat's pretty much done. We're gonna do a little bit of work on the fuel system, like I mentioned, but we're not there yet. So today, I'm gonna to try to put a feature that some of our newer cars have into one of the older cars and it's the courtesy lighting. So when I walk up to Go Man Go and open the door, you can see how the interior lights come on. You get the dome, which is pretty normal. But what you also get is the footwell lighting that lights up. And in this car, you can see there's a pretty bright LED in the front, and then just a little dimly lit one. You can barely see it back there in the back. And that one stays on pretty much all the time and just very gently illuminates the footwell and it's not distracting and it's not bright. It's just there just to give a, light, a very light glow. You can barely see your feet. Miss Speedy's car does the exact same thing. And hers even lights up under the car, which is pretty awesome. And the Camaro does it too. But guess which car doesn't do it? Yep, this guy. Nope, definitely no courtesy lighting. So I'm going to try to add it. And like always, with all of my projects, I'm gonna do it just like I think Toyota might have done it had this been available back in 2002. Actually, what I'm gonna do is probably a little bit better than even Toyota might have done it. I've noticed in a lot of the newer cars that do have this feature, it's just cheap LEDs in a little plastic box or they're just kinda a little drilled hole and a little holder thing and an LED and a little wiring harness. I'm gonna go a step further than that. I have found these Bolt LEDs and these are aluminum they're all metal and I got two different ones. This one's pretty bright. I'll tell you more about these later. And this one's much more dim. So the big one will be used as the courtesy light when you open the door. But like the Hellcat, I also want a very, very dim one to light up at night or when the parking lights are on just to barely light up the footwell. Just barely, not be distracting, not be bright, nothing like that where you can barely tell it's there. But when you look down, you can just barely see your shoes and know that there's some light down there. So today, I'm gonna to start working on the brackets and how we're actually gonna mount those up. And then I gotta figure out the wiring, but that'll be for another day. I'm gonna start with some of this aluminum angle. You can get this at the hardware store. I've used this for a bunch of stuff. I've got a couple of uh, flat corner brackets. Might try some of those. I'm gonna make some cardboard or paper templates and go see what works. I've got some flat aluminum stock, some screws and bolts, glue if I need it. So we're gonna start making something up, see if we can make these things fit in there in a factory way. And they have to kind of be centered underneath the dash, so, and underneath the seats. You don't wanna have them on one side or the other. You wanna get even light distribution so it's just a nice glow. So let's get started. So I'm known to over-engineer my solutions, but they last, so don't judge. And now it's what I like to call arts and crafts with Speedy's Garage. So what we gotta do is figure out how these are gonna mount up. And I'm thinking this angle stock is three quarter on one side, what is it, about a half on the other? Yeah. So if we bend up some paper to be three quarter on one side and half on the other, we're gonna make it line up just like the metal does before we get started. So we got here, bingo, three quarter. Let's mark this on the half side. Now we're gonna cut this side down. Don't have to be perfect, just reasonable proximity. So now we've got our angle iron or angle aluminum. And when I lay these lights in here, I'm gonna mount them to the three quarter side. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna mount them in kind of like, kind of like this, so they're gonna go through. So if we lay it out, <clears throat> you gotta think about how wide do you want this thing to be. And I'm probably gonna leave, let's call it uh, three millimeters, eighth of an inch or so, leading up to the light. I'm gonna mark it on the wide end of the light. And then I probably want about an eighth or three millimeter space between the two lights. We'll measure that off. Ah, we're gonna use a quarter. Make it a quarter inch. And then I'm gonna see what the overall length is. So with all of my spacing, I've got about an eighth of an inch before the first light, I've got a quarter inch between them, and then an eighth of an inch after the second light. It looks like we're gonna be right about an inch and a half total length. So now we can cut this down to an inch and a half and double check our work to make sure both lights will fit with enough room between them and enough kind of extra space on the end for rigidity, we'll call it. That's gonna work out real good. So now I know we need to make 
four, because I'm, I'm gonna do uh, lights under the seats, under each front seat that'll kind of illuminate in the back, and then lights under the dash up front to illuminate the front. So I'm gonna need to make four of these little brackets. What? Look who it is. Look who it is, still in their pajamas. So now we need to find the center of the center, which is where we're gonna do the X marks the spot to drill our hole. And I'm gonna measure the width of what's left. So you took, we took off an eighth from each end and we took off a quarter in the middle. That leaves what's in between. And that will measure right at five millimeters. So we're gonna divide that by two. That means the center will be at two and a half millimeters. Set that up, that looks right. So I'm gonna mark it. And where that X is, is where we're gonna drill our two holes for the bolt LEDs. And mark it, just like that. Should be good. I had one more thought, I made a small change. The bar stock I'm using, the aluminum bar stock, I'm planning to mount them up something, you know, use it something like that. And this measures three millimeters thick. Now I might use, these flat brackets as well, they're thinner. So I know three millimeters, I measured it, will work. So I'm gonna move the center line up three millimeters just to make sure I don't have any interference with that retaining ring. One other thing to think about is do you care where the big LED is versus the small? I do, so I have marked my brackets to be driver front and I want the big one to be in the front so that when it's mounted up, it's shining the bright light down closest to the driver and the small one to be in the back. So it's shining back on the driver's feet and it'll be dimmer. So I have marked them driver front and passenger front and I've marked them big and small appropriately so that when I know I mount them up in the car, I know where those big and small LEDs are gonna be. We're gonna use a step bit and this particular one graduates from 3 16 of an inch all the way up to one half. I'm gonna use 5 16 for the small LED bolt I'm gonna use 7 16 for the large and that should be just about perfect. I'm gonna do a quick test fit. That one's perfect. Now we're gonna try the bigger one. All right, so step bit's the trick. 5 16 and 7 16 And we're all said and done, that is what we ended up with. A nice little custom bracket that will look better than OEM when it's actually in the vehicle. So this would, for example, be passenger side front. It'll mount up just like that. It's my plan. And then the bracket will go in underneath somehow like this. I gotta figure this part out and mount underneath the dash somehow to hold it like that. So that's how it will go. And then the wiring will run, of course. We're gonna finish up, oops, finish up the rest of our bracket system. I gotta go kind of take a look, see how we're gonna do that. All right, sorry it's gonna be dark, but that's the only way I can do this. I gotta figure out how to mount the light. So I've got the power probe out. I'm gonna try to kind of get an idea of where I have space under the dash and how the light looks the best. I think, I tried it sideways, but the way the light works, it's creating a shadow on the, I think it's the heater box here. So putting it straight on is gonna work the best, I think, and the best look. So that's the light that'll come on when you open the door. And that's going to be just the ambient lighting. I'm probably going to put a 1K ohm resistor on that just to dim it a little bit. But I think we found our spot on the passenger side. I'm just going to do the same on the driver's side. And then we're going to finish up the brackets. Did the same thing in the back, which is going to be a little bit easier because of the frame of the seat. We've got quite a few mounting options underneath the seat for the passenger area. I went ahead and removed the passenger seat so I could get a better look at how the underneath bracing was actually set up and I could find a good spot to actually mount the bracket. Pretty easy, it was just four bolts, took about five minutes to get it out, and now we've got some really good access to the underside of the seat. And I found this tab, and I went and checked, and there is the same tab on the driver's side too, so this will work. And the way we're gonna set it up is this will bolt onto the bracket, and it gets our, our lights it's pretty well centered on the seat, and this will be for obviously the rear footwell but that's how it's gonna be set up. A little bracket right there. We'll put a hole just to put a nut or screw through it. This piece of fabric used to stretch all the way over here. It was just held on with a little clip. I'll roll that back neatly, obviously. 
where it's nice and tidy, but it doesn't block the light. So it'll be, it'll be put back like this when it's all said and done. Okay, so easy peasy. We used our angle brace and put one screw through an existing hole through the brace and the seat brace to hold it. And we put a screw obviously through the bracket itself to hold the LEDs. We'll run the wiring later on. I'm just getting the brackets done today. Easy peasy. I did have to shave about a millimeter off this end of the little angle brace to get it to fit nice inside the bracket that I made. But other than that, super easy, better than what the factory might have done. Now we just got three more to make. I also removed the glove box, which was just a couple of Phillips head screws so I could get a really good look at where I wanted to mount the passenger side front LED bracket. It's going to be a little bit more tricky, but not too, too bad. I think we're going to put a 90 degree bend in the little brace here, and then we'll mount it to this brace in the truck. Comes out with a couple of bolts, but I think we'll probably just be able to drill it right where it's at. No big deal. Go ahead and put that 90 degree bend in like that real quick and easy. Do a couple of test fits. All right, let's see how we did. Perfect. It's exactly where I want them to be. You can see the lights will come through here and then the wire will just run back towards the center of the car. One more to go. The driver's side is going to be the trickiest. I took a look under here and because there's a air conditioning vent that runs right over here, Space is going to be a little bit limited, but I can figure something out. I'm going to drop this panel, which is four 10 millimeter bolts, so I can get a better look. So as you can see, that duck's pretty big and in the way. Looks like it's just one Phillips head screw to get that out. So we're going to do that next. So we can get a better look at everything. Mounting options are really limited on the driver's side because of that air duct. I thought about maybe using the steering column brace but that's super thick i'd have to drill a hole through that and then i kind of did some mock fitting and i don't think the lights would properly clear that air tube i thought about putting them back here shining in but the problem then is you want the light distribution to be even and match the passenger side and the passenger side is going to be more in the middle here so i think what we're going to do is we're just going to literally mount the lights to the air duct that looked like the best solution. It would actually be like that. And some people say, oh no, you're gonna drill a hole in the air duct. Well, there's already holes all in it. There's great, great big ones. It's not gonna, not gonna hurt anything. And through that one, we'd be able to reach the uh, little nuts that we're gonna put in to hold it. So it'll be probably mounted up something, something like that right there. So that's what we're gonna plan to do. And to get them painted up, I cleaned them up with some clean strip prep all and this is a aerosol spray since they're kind of intricate corners and stuff I'm going to use a spray on these. Aluminum is unique. You have to use a self etching primer. I learned that the hard way paint will not stick to aluminum without this. I did go ahead and hit them with some 220 grit sandpaper just to give a little bit of tooth. I'm going to use this primer and then the just regular old satin rust-oleum black paint. We want them hidden. Don't want them to stand out at all and that will do the job. Paint it up, now we're just gonna let them dry. And after letting them dry a couple of hours, here's what we ended up with. Something nice and custom, but still looks pretty much OEM or better than OEM actually, because they're actually made out of metal rather than plastic like most OEMs would use in this case. And now our courtesy lighting and our ambient lighting will have nice little brackets to set in. So all in, I probably have an hour in making the brackets and probably another hour where I was searching on the on the forerunner trying to figure out exactly how I wanted them to, to be and where I wanted them to set, where I was gonna put the screw holes and all that stuff. So figure about two hours of time. And even if I had to buy the paint, the brackets and everything, I had some of this stuff. I had the paint, I had the uh, angle aluminum. I had I had, did have to buy the screws and I did have to buy the uh, angle braces. But had I had to buy everything, it would have still been less than $20. So for less than 20 bucks, I've got some nice custom brackets that will look OEM if anyone were to ever see them. So you might be saying, well, Speedy, why'd you spend this last, whatever, how long this video is? I don't know how long it'll be when I edit it together. Let's call it 20 minutes, give or take, showing us how to build brackets. Well, it's because I see a bunch of people do this kind of project. And I'm not saying it's wrong that they buy strip LEDs with adhesive back and just stick them underneath the dash, or they put double-sided tape on an LED board and just stick it underneath the dash with bare wires running and whatnot. It works. You open the door, you'll get light. 
The difference is I'm trying to show that there might be a more advanced way to do it where you can actually have it look OEM. It'll be very durable and very secure. You're not going to have issues with the bevel sided tape giving you trouble down the road or hanging down. And if somebody were to look underneath the dash and see it, it's going to look very professionally done. So that's kind of my point. I didn't always know how to do this kind of stuff. I've been working on cars for a while and I've picked these tips and tricks up from other people. And I just like to show you guys how I do things. This is probably a, a very over-engineered piece as I said at the beginning of the video, but that's how I do things and I never have trouble with them. Stuff on the Forerunner I did almost 20 years ago has never given me a bit of trouble, so it works. And the wiring is gonna be done the exact same way. It will be at least as good as OEM, if not better, but that's a project for another day. We've got a beautiful weekend day. I've been working on these little projects when the weather's been bad, it's been rainy and cold. We've got a beautiful weekend day today. I'm gonna get Go Man Go out here, go turn some fuel into noise. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Check us out on Instagram, it's at speedies underscore garage, as well as our website, www.speediesgarage.net. And hopefully, I will see you out there. Mm -hmm.